Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. I was slightly at a loss for what sort of video to do today, but it's kind of a breezy November, and I like free things, including free electricity. So let's make a wind generator. Now, I think I might have enough spare parts in my junk drawers for this already. Let's see, here's some fan blades, but I want something a little bigger than that. Here's like a little turbine fan thing, but again, that's a little too small. Now somewhere in here, I think I have some bigger fan blades. Now that looks more like it. All right, now we need an alternator or a motor. I've got some old battery-powered tools that kind of work, but kind of don't work. So, yeah, this one's a little old. I think it still functions. The casing's all cracked, but the motor should still work. So maybe we'll use something like this as the generator part. Now one problem I've run into when trying to design a wind turbine is how do you get it to track the wind and follow it? You could have the motor set up so it twists around and follows the wind, but then how do you get the power out of it without the cables all twisting around or without designing some kind of complicated commutator ring that then has to be waterproofed? Well, what if we just mount the motor vertically and then have kind of a universal mechanical joint uh, with a 90 degree thing on it that rotates around? Fortunately, I already have a dingus just like that. It's this 90 degree drill adapter, which is way up at the top of my pegboard because it never gets used. But I think this might do exactly what I want. It's a mechanical 90 degree linkage that uh, rotates things around and it already has the drill chucks, so it's compatible with the rest of the junk I'm using. So the rest of what we need is just bits and pieces. We need a tail, we need a, a circular thing to mount these onto. I could probably make a hub for those fan blades with uh, something in my scrap pile here, like maybe a sheet of aluminum, but uh, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm going to see if I can find something circular already. Hmm. <sighs> too heavy. Ew. Too gross. What? What is that? Eh. Too flimsy. Hmm. Maybe. As with anything even slightly newish that I own, this comes directly from Axeman Surplus Stores. I think this might actually work. And I should mention, I didn't buy these fan blades. These are actually scavenged from my work off of an old ceiling fan. They're not quite correct for a wind turbine because the curve is, I don't know, aerodynamically slightly wrong, but I think it'll still spin around in the wind. All right, I admit this project is not 100% free because I probably paid for these bolts, although I think I got them for a dollar in a giant coffee can full of other fasteners. So when it comes down to it, these are probably about two cents worth of bolts. I'll put a couple uh, washers under this one for standoffs to straighten this out a little more. And again, random garage sale hardware, probably a couple bucks worth. This is why I just have drawers and cupboards and boxes of hardware and junk hoarded all over the garage. I, I don't need it right now, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but eventually I'll use some of it. Alright, well there's definitely plenty of wind for this thing, because we got some windy my tripod blew over, so I'm going to have to go inside and see if this particular segment is blurry now, because the camera kind of landed on the front. I don't know if the lens is screwed up or if it uh, can even focus anymore. If it can, if the camera's working, um, it seems like this guy's working. So I've got my uh, 90 degree gear here, and as you can see the uh, gear ratio changes as it goes through, so it actually runs a little bit faster on the output shaft here. So maybe that'll make more power. On the downside, uh, this old drill I was going to use, it, it actually doesn't work at all. It's so cracked and busted that uh, it doesn't actually turn the drill motor. So uh, we might have to find a different one, throw this one out. Uh, I think this might be beyond save it for parts at this point, but uh, I've got some other drills lying around somewhere, so we'll dig those out and see what we can do. All right, I found some old drills, and I was going to take these apart and just uh, keep the motor and the chuck. But then uh, I went to Axeman, and they had a drill motor with chuck for $4.95, so saves me tearing an old drill apart. 
Let's see if I can find a pipe this fits in. Yeah, up close. Yeah, that's just about perfect. Now I need some wire for my drawer of random electrical stuff. I'm just going to cut this one up and use it as the feed down the pipe. Uh, it's got this weird plug that I'll probably never use. Although, having said that, I'm sure as soon as I cut this up I'll find something that uses this plug tomorrow. Just got some scrap aluminum. I'm doing like a tail boom on here now. So I've run into a couple problems. First up, the gearing inside of this chuck and uh, motor assembly is just wrong for that wind turbine. So it's having to fight way too much gearing in here to actually spin that motor with any efficiency. I was hoping the little right angle adapter with its own gears would help with that, but it really doesn't. So I'm going to pull this out, see if I can remove the little gearbox that's in there, just to have it basically direct drive to the motor and see if that works any better. All right, so what's actually in here? Got our uh, main motor. And we got one of these fancy arrangements. These gears are probably plastic, so not the best thing to have in there for longevity anyway. I need to figure out how to go basically straight from this motor out to the chuck and bypass all this stuff. All right, well, I think about trying to adapt this drill. I'm going to take apart this other drill too, just to see what's in there, see if it's even easier. This one's a better drill for sure. All the gears are actually metal in this one. This is the part of the video where we do some high-precision machining. Alright, now I'm making my own parts, but uh, I don't actually have a lathe or anything like that, and I'm just making it out of pipes. So I was able to shape that little piece of scrap pipe into a linkage to go between the drill chuck and the motor. So they are tied together now in a direct drive configuration. No gears between them. When the prop spins, drill spins at essentially the same speed. Alright, so this thing is technically working now. I had to do a lot more fiddling around with the drive from my turbine blades down into my drill motor, but it is putting out a voltage, even if it's only a couple volts right now. Um, the wind isn't strong enough today. I'm actually going to take this out to Sandland and put it up on top of the hill where there's more consistent wind and then uh, we'll be able to see if it outputs uh, better voltage and if it stays together because this thing's a little janky. I had to jury rig a lot of stuff on it so I don't know how long this will actually hold up before it all flies apart. If I was going to do this a little more permanently or better I would have some kind of a reefing mechanism where the thing could fold up if the wind got too high or a brake where it could just dump the extra power to a dummy load and not just sit there and burn up the motor, overcharge the batteries, whatever else. Um, so there are some other things I could do with this. Uh, I could also put a better motor on here. I could actually use an alternator instead of just an electric drill. But I want to kind of see how some of this other stuff holds together for now. If it does fall apart, if it breaks, I have some extra fan blades like this. I can probably rebuild it if I need to. And maybe we can do a better one in the future. If I am going to use this for charging batteries, I will also need a blocking diode so the power only goes one direction. And I'll probably need some kind of a charge controller to regulate the power going to that battery. So those are all things for future uh, modifications on this. So here I'm just making a little waterproof shield to kind of go over the motor mechanism. Or I'm just smashing straight through this super brittle container. Well that's trash. Alright, I did get a rain shield on here that rotates along with the upper part of the turbine. So this uh, plastic shell just covers the motor assembly, keeps the rain out of there. Hopefully that'll work. It's not the prettiest, but uh, it should hold together for a while. So I'm going to wrap this video up for now. I'm going to do another one where I actually do a stress test on this thing and see will it last for a week or two out on top of a hill in regular November Midwestern conditions. Anyway, thanks for watching this one. Stay tuned for the stress test video where we see if this just blows up, and we'll see you next time.